Hello, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Mandy Mack. And I am Chris Rivers, and we are Paul on the Call. And today we are so excited to be interviewing our very first studio, Ariel, Ariel Arts, Arts Fitness. Fitness. <laughs> oh, right is that away. a kitty? Ah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Which so, kitty is that? It was this Hazel is and... Hazel. Yeah. Oh. This is our second round of Studio Cats. The first one went to a great home. And Aww. now we have these bottle babies. Oh, there's Cashew. He wants to be in it too. And this hunting oh, gentleman oh, is Cashew. Gorgeous. Oh, I love them so much. Absolutely gorgeous. So they, they like to photobomb everybody's videos. <laughs> <laughs> they live here 24 7 at the studio. And we've just found that having them around really like breaks the ice with people. So that's kind of the point that. of having them here. It makes our studio feel a little more like um, a homey place. Yes. <laughs> you know what? I did hear but, that from one of our students who visited your studio for a rental and they were like practicing for PSO and they were really nervous. But then they were like, there's these cats <laughs> that <laughs> made me feel really good. And I was like, oh, really? <laughs> so the, the cats that. are very appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for being our very first studio interview and um would you mind just introducing yourselves for for everyone so everyone knows um who we're talking to from aerial arts fitness <laughs> sure. so i'm angela shabbat i started aerial arts fitness in 2012 um and then in 2022 march of this year i sold the studio to my best friend jen so this is jen pierce she's the current studio owner and hello, I'm Jen Pierce. I've been a student here since 2011. I'm, I'm looking at you like oh, you know. 2012. 2012. <laughs> <laughs> so I signed up for one class and quickly it became my life and I, I never left. <laughs> I love that. And then you just switched it over um, to another friend. That's beautiful. Yes. Yes, that is awesome. And I can't, I couldn't believe you have been open for so long. I know, 10, ten years. years. What a blessing. Wow. Yes. This is our second location. Um, we were in a smaller location and then we ran out of space. So we had to expand to a yeah. double the size. <laughs> yeah. Did you get to celebrate your 10 years this year? You know, we kind of forgot, <laughs> honestly. So, uh, <laughs> it, it, for me, the studio has been a, such a big part of my life for so long that I just kind of sometimes I forget about those milestones. So we'll have to we'll have to make a post about it or something. But yeah, we, we just yeah, kind of, yeah. Uh, it, it feels like we've been here forever. So, um, but yeah, we should celebrate our milestones. Yes. <laughs> and, and I yeah. I live in Connecticut, but I had to look up where Jewett City, Connecticut, was. And I was like, wow, it's like really <laughs> down in there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we have more cows than people. It's yes, it's a very uh, rural community out here. Um, so, you know, when we started 10 years ago, I wasn't sure how this community would feel about pole dance. And honestly, we've not had one remark. We've not had one comment. And, you know, part of that's the way we presented it. But um you know, it's, it's really been all great. And now we're just kind of integrated here. I think still a lot of people don't even know we're here or what we do here. Um, you kind of can't see us from the road. We're kind of down by a river. We're right next to um, the Quinnebog River here. Um, so a lot of people don't know we're here still. But other than that, we've been totally like accepted and invited to events in the community. It's all good. That's so good to hear. <laughs> I know. Um, you usually don't hear that, but it's like you said, it's probably how you presented it. Aerial arts fitness, that's a smart way to present it. <laughs> and I'm glad we, we chose that as a name because we've really greatly expanded from pole dance. In order mm -hmm. to kind of have a successful business model, you really often need more than just pole dance to keep to keep people hooked. So when you first started, did you have just pole or did you have everything? We just had pole when we started in 2012. We only had one studio space. 
Um, so we really didn't have a lot of room. And then we brought in a Lyra workshop and a Silks workshop. Mm -hmm. And then almost immediately after that, Jen took over the aerial program and she started teaching Lyra first. Yep. Um, so then we had Lyra and aerial hammock for many years. Um, then we added Silks maybe 2015, 16, somewhere around in there, we added Silks. And now, what? gosh, we have a lot of things now. So we have pole, silks, aerial hammock, pole silkies, um, lollipop, trapeze. Um, we, we have a heart, we have a triangle, we have a moon. We just got the fly pole. Fly pole. We have a mini lira. What else? Uh, we have I like, that, I think that's enough. <laughs> we have about everything that <laughs> you can buy. Ever yes, yeah. we have it. <laughs> I think that's wow. enough. <laughs> that's that's um, amazing. Did you, for other studios out there who might want to expand, did you find it a hard transition to expand from being just a pole fitness studio to no. adding more stuff? No, not at all. It, the the hardest part is the facility. So you know, and even cool. here, we love our facility, but you can always have more space, higher ceilings, fewer obstructions. Um, it's very hard to find a facility that fits with the business model as far as rent that can be afforded and stuff like that. So the facility is the biggest problem, but no, the students were very willing to jump on board. With, they love it. Every, so the flying pole was kind of a Christmas present to the instructors. Yeah. So they love it. Anytime something new comes in, that's um, that's a big New, bonus. unique, yeah. yeah. Do it for the gram. <laughs> That's incredible that I feel like that helps build such a larger community and helps people expand their dance experience and aerial for it is so much more. That's an awesome model. Yeah. And people, you know, we've had like one of our instructors that's been with us for almost 10, well, no, not quite that long. She's been with us a very long time. She started out in Lyra with Jen. And for many years, she was only doing Lyra. Then she switched to pole. Then she switched to heels, and now she's a very popular heels instructor. <laughs> That's awesome. So you find that people kind of gravitate to the apparatus that, you know, really charges them up and makes them feel good. And sometimes it's not the apparatus they started on. Yeah, yeah. And you have, like, some interesting ones that you see on Instagram, but you don't know where to try them. Like, like I've never danced in a heart. I feel like that would be awesome. <laughs> you can come try it out whenever. Yes. It's yes. a little pointy, so you just have to be careful of your head, but it's yeah. definitely uh, fun to yeah. sit in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so cool. And it oh, will I'm probably sure make everyone it. more more uh, inspired to create different and new ideas um, and meld everything together. <laughs> and we have, the, because those apparatus, you know, it's kind of hard to teach a whole class with just one apparatus. So we offer a lot of open studio times where we have an instructor around to help. And that's kind of the time when people get to play with um, the apparatus that maybe they wanted to get a picture of or try a, try a trick on or something. Oh, that's cool. So your open studios are more of like a guided experience rather than just like a free for all. Um, no, I wouldn't say it's too too guided, but the instructor's there to help. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, especially if you wanted to try something new and you were like, I don't know what to do on this heart. <laughs> yeah. No, and Jen is almost always here to like help people and you know, give them if they're kind of standing around not knowing what to work on, she knows how to, you know, give them some exercises or some choreo or something to work on. Yeah, I find it that um, it gets people coming back, that one-time expense, mm. it keeps them engaged, interested, and I don't mind it because I want to try it. So I'm, yeah. I'm willing to get some other things in just to keep people coming back into the studio. That's nice. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, and as far as build out, like, do you want to talk about some of the, the like struggles of finding a space that was good for pole and aerial? Because I know for for like our studio, we can only put pole in our studio. The ceilings are not gonna accommodate things hanging from it. But yeah, how did you how did you find that? And and how tall are your your ceilings? 
Um, so our, our ceilings are a different height depending on where you are in the studio, but the pole room is about 11 and a half feet and the aerial room is between 11 and a half and 12. So a lot of people will understand that that you could go much higher for aerial and we would love to have a higher space, but this is what we have. And I think people shouldn't discount making use of what you have. So we're not gonna do big giant silks drops in this space, but there's an endless amount of curriculum you can teach people with a lower ceiling height. You don't have to feel limited. Um, you know, if they want a higher ceiling height, they can take a lesson from somebody that has it, but we have a lot to offer at a lower ceiling height too. I love that idea of just taking what you have and accepting it. Cause you're right. You can really teach anything no matter what the height is. Right. <laughs> creatively. And as far as the build out goes, um, it's tough to have one space that you do both. So we looked at 10, 20, 30. I mean, we've looked at a lot of spaces and eventually we probably will move to another space again, <laughs> but the spaces that have the really high ceilings for aerials, then you get into a problem with the pole because you've got to drop the ceiling or get scaffolding, which can be very, very pricey and very hard to maintain. Um, so this space has kind of worked well for us to do both. Um, if we ever move, you definitely have to think of that um, too high height for pole. <laughs> Right. And then it's harder to find insurances based on the ceiling height that you have as well. And yeah. like a whole other, like, do you, are you only teaching um, 18 and up as well, or is it all ages? So we do all ages, but not as much as we used to. So I can tell you a little bit about that. And around 2015, we started teaching children and it was very popular, almost too popular. So we had, you know, there was one class that was like 16 kids in the class. And what we found with the classes is that there's a huge range in ability with kids. So teaching large kids classes is very difficult and you need a lot of instructors. So it ended up that the price we were making versus the amount we were paying our instructors, it just, it wasn't very financially feasible because we needed so many instructors. And the kids, you know, a typical 10 year old, some 10 year olds are climbing up the pole and flipping and dropping and have crazy flexibility and are really body aware. And some 10 year olds have zero body awareness. So it's very hard to teach group classes with children because they're such drastically different ability levels. So we don't have children's group classes anymore, but we do teach private lessons. So we encourage the kids to come in and do private lessons. And then oftentimes if they're, you know, 10, 11, 12, 13, once we kind of get them to a, a level of body awareness where they can participate in an adult class, then we welcome them to our adult classes, um, just depending on their ability. I love that. Um, I didn't even think about the need for more instructors for it, but I love that you still offer that opportunity. Did you require um because i know you're in connecticut does it require a special insurance for kids um my the insurance that i have um covers children so it, it wasn't a special insurance um but i know some insurance companies do have different um, requirements yeah insurance is probably a whole nother podcast <laughs> yeah right <laughs> and then they change things every year and then you have to redo things uh, and yeah yeah, so I anyone think thinking awesome about, about opening children. a studio, really, really um, think about the insurance piece before you open the door because it's a lot of work. Yes. Oh, yes, uh, for sure. That is I, didn't know there was a, I didn't know there's a studio um, in Master, Connecticut that teaches students, um, children. It's, there's a, I think there's like such a huge market for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people ask us all the time, and I don't know where to send them, but now I do. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a special person to teach children. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right, I had to think for a moment, too, because I was like, do I want to get into all of that? Nah. And, you know, we've really, we've had really good experiences as far as people being very open-minded, which I appreciate. Yeah. So, you know, we'll be teaching a heels class in one room and a private lesson to a 10 year old in another room. And we've really not gotten a lot of, you know, pushback on that. I mean, they know when they come in the door what we teach because it's all on the website. 
and we, you know, I really appreciate the parents who are willing to bring their kids in here to teach a lesson right. and be open-minded about it and, you know, just see it as another, another dance form. Yes, exactly. I've had one that. student um, since she was 11. She just turned 17. So wow. it's interesting watching her grow yeah. up in the studio and she's amazing now. She does all her showcase so we, yeah. and yeah. just really took this lifestyle. Yeah. That's so awesome. And then it'll send that message to all of their friends too. And, you know. Uh, I feel here in the United States, you don't hear that much often, unfortunately, that children getting into it. Yeah. As opposed to other places. Yeah. Because yeah, so they're going to so be. Much for doing that. Yeah. They're going to be your new clientele in a couple of years so get them where exactly. they're young and bendable and they bounce back <laughs> I know they do the stuff I don't want to do because my body doesn't do that anymore <laughs> right imagine if we started at that age that would have been so awesome yeah. uh -oh. I tell them like stretch every day you're gonna lose it yeah. and it, it really oh adds a goodness. new energy to the classes when we have like a 14 year old that can do a needle scale or something it's it's inspiring for the the older folks to see that and it's also just it adds it adds an element that you don't have if you only teach you know 20 30 somethings yes for sure we have the same you know if you want to talk about inclusion and diversity we have the same thing with men we invite men to the studio to all the classes they're welcome we don't have a woman only policy and you know we don't have a lot of men but we do have some and Again, they add an energy to the classes that yeah. is a little bit different and usually appreciated by everyone in the class. We have this big guy too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, cat. <laughs> all humans and all cats. Love yes. it. All are welcome. <laughs> yes, I do have a question about the cats because um, I would love to visit your studio, but I'm severely allergic to cats. How do you get around that for clients who are allergic? You know, we, we kind of have a policy of we have open inclusion for everybody, but we can't cater to everybody. So, <laughs> you know, if you're severely allergic, it's probably not the studio for you to come to. Um, you know, maybe if you really want to come, take a couple Benadryl before you come. <laughs> but we can, they do have their own cat room. Um, yes. That's nicer than most people's houses. And we clean the studio from top to bottom daily. So there's not a bunch of cat dander yeah. and hair yeah. laying around. So, I mean, we, we can put them in their own room if there's somebody that, um, you know, can't be around them. But if you're severely allergic, I don't know if that's enough. <laughs> I know. It sucks. They're my favorite animal. But, yeah, they're the worst for me. <laughs> but I don't, I don't want that to stop me. I definitely could take a couple of Benadryl, bring an EpiPen or something. <laughs> <laughs> you offer so much that I like and dying to try. Good, yes. No, they'll love you from afar. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. Do, do the cats ever participate in choreography? Um, occasionally they do, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they come around and get in people's way and you know there's lots of scooching they're kind of known for getting in people's purses so you know sometimes we have to dig them out of somebody's bag or something but they're very comfortable here so they'll just come plop down at the bottom of a pole and you know sometimes they're danced around and sometimes they're removed they've been on uh pole lols a couple of times in their tail videos <laughs> that's so funny I'm just oh, waiting for like the, the full choreographed piece of these cats. <laughs> <laughs> Little pleasers. They do have um, a habit it's because they grew up here. They've been here since they were kittens. They know, they seem to understand what a phone is used for. So they will knock phones. When people are propping their phones to take a video, they'll run over and knock the phone down. So we've got oh some nail videos. <laughs> They're so silly. <laughs> oh my gosh. I feel like I wouldn't get any pole dancing done though. I would just be playing with the cat. <laughs> it's a good break. Like you don't want to do Superman's today. Uh, the cat needs me. <laughs> <laughs> right. We also find, you know, 
I'm sure all of you know this from pole dance, but it can cause a lot of anxiety for people trying it out for the first time. They're nervous, they're scared, they don't know what to expect. And so, you know, if they just need a mental break, they can just mm-hmm. sit down and pet a cat and it's very soothing to people. Yes. I'm actually glad you brought that up because there's been a few students that I've asked to, um, if it's okay to bring their emotional support animals to class. And, you know, we had to think about the space that we have and everything, but you have a built in (laughs) emotional (laughs) support animal system. So you're right. And it is nice to have something. um, If you have a lot of anxiety, um, to have something soft and warm and loving, (laughs) And hopefully not itchy for Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Chris. <laughs> I know. You know, I used to be allergic to cats and then everything changed. I don't know. Now I'm not. Yeah. That's maybe good. maybe it'll turn around, Chris. <laughs> okay, you're I hope good. so. I used to not be allergic and then out of nowhere. <laughs> we'll be okay. I'm excited <laughs> for this tour. Oh yes. It's- so Should we do it? Two studio spaces. I will. <laughs> sorry, it's like just. Do you want to turn? The yeah, mic? I don't know. I'm not very good with technology. Switch. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yes. So this is the space that is. You said it was 11 feet. Yes, it's about 11 and a half feet, depending on where you are. We have, uh, do we have 10? 10 poles. 10 poles. Wow, <laughs> 10 poles. And are they all 45 millimeter or what um, size are they? They are all 45. We have occasionally played around with a 50 and a 40 for different reasons, but those mostly get thrown in the back room. Um, we have them. We can put them up if we need them. Um, so we had a couple of girls doing a competition where they only had 50. So we brought out the 50 so they could practice. Um, but for the most part, people prefer the 45s. Um, we do have stainless steel. Mostly there's a few Chrome left in here. We -hmm. find from a studio perspective, the Chrome doesn't last as long. Um, so the stainless steel seems to last a little bit longer. Um, they're all, they all have the X locks so they can be turned to spin very quickly, which is handy for classes because we do a little bit of spin in almost every class. Yeah. And the best part of this room is the floors are heated. I was going to ask you about that. (laughs) What a good idea. (laughs) Yes. So my husband and I did this ourselves, which I don't recommend doing because it's a lot of work. Um, But this entire floor has heated tubes underneath of it. So we can heat the floor pretty much as hot as we want to get it. And it heats the whole room. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Especially like Uh last night when I tried to do our basin floor tricks class and we were just like frozen on the floor. Like, and it, does it heat up the poles too? Is it like, um, I wouldn't say it heats the, I mean, the poles are kind of ambient temperature. Um, they're not freezing, but no, it doesn't really heat the poles, but that's awesome. And we have, I know studios have different opinions about mirrors, but we have mm. one wall that's totally mirrors. Um, mm. I'm, I need a mirror to see what I'm doing. And yeah. so I, I appreciate the mirror, but I know not everybody does that. We even, yeah. he, we have a sliding door here between our two sides of our studio. Oh, and that wow. even has a mirror. So we have lots of mirrors. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so we'll take you into the aerial room. I had a friend of mine make this beautiful custom door. So oh, it's it turned back to me. Oh, oh, no, it did. Uh, it was a mirror. <laughs> here. Oh, okay. cool! Wow, it's like a whole other space. So it's this gorgeous. is the aerial room. We've got so many things hanging in here at the moment. Yeah. Um, all these things are changed, you know, based on what class is coming up next. But we have a zillion silks, a zillion hammocks zillion eras everything in here um i'll just walk you around this some of our shapes here with the liras we also store some personal liras here for people um the moon you can't see it it's kind of behind the ladder oh yeah yeah um trapeze love it Um, this is just equipment here all our span sets and everything (laughs) Um, crash pads Here's our nice. new flying pole. Oh, wow. Give them a spin, Angela. 
Yes. Oh my goodness, I love it. <laughs> Go do something impressive. So this is literally the second time I've climbed on this thing, so don't expect anything. <laughs> right, I wouldn't even know how to hold on. It's silicone. I love, I love it. it. Oh my gosh, we have to go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I can stick to it in hand. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah, I definitely want to try that. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> and I also want to go on that silk back there. That is my favorite color. The bright I yellow. Love all the <laughs> Which one? The yellow? <laughs> the bright yellow Which one. one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't even oh, like silk, but I need heart. a picture. Wait, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. She can't see me because it's flipped, but like I have my yellow hair because neon yellow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Her hair matches her silk. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> There's so much color in there. I love it. Right? It so looks this like is, a dream. This is Jen's office back here. <laughs> It's what? probably a That's mess. So cool. yeah. It's like a little ship. Yes. <laughs> and we have a bathroom. I don't think you need to see the bathroom. Oh, yes. There is something <laughs> in the bathroom you need to see. So every year we do a calendar. So this is like an evolution of the studio over many years. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's so cute. Because we I hang every it. calendar in here. In the Ooh. bathroom. Look. You're good. Just hit the button. Sorry, low battery here. That's so cute. Oh, so I love this is kind of picture. like <laughs> to go down memory lane here. That is. Oh, that oh, is that's so a familiar. good idea. <laughs> that's little baby, little baby Jen from ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> and then so she cute. she covered up our article in the New London Day. <laughs> oh, we made I the, love it. We made the front page of the New London Day many years ago. So. Wow, your mountain area is so awesome. And here's our awards for best instructor. Awesome. So I didn't know you could get here. awards for that. that right? was I was like, what is that award? <laughs> <laughs> uh, New London Day is a newspaper around here, so they do a like Reader's Choice Awards. That's yeah, incredible. That's, that's beautiful. Cool. This, is, this is our little store. Oh, cool. There. All our merch. Halloween decorations. <laughs> yeah, those are. <laughs> yeah. That's so cute. Here. Yeah, we try to sell a little bit of everything between tack, dry hands, Luna, yeah. push and pull. Got pretty much all of it. That's hi, awesome. Hi. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> And then how is the sound in, in the both rooms? Do you because you have uh classes running simultaneously? Is it yeah, like pretty so, soundproof? No, it's not soundproof. You can hear, but for the most part, um <laughs> nobody cares. You know, nobody cares. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. These are this is our instructor wall. So we had one of our students oh. as an artist. Right. No, she's an instructor. She well, yeah, she's an instructor and an artist and a student. <laughs> That's <laughs> incredible. Oh, you guys she, are amazing. She made all these. Um, this is her. This is the one who made them. Wow. No, that's actually No, that's Rachel. Yeah, but you're not showing them that. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. There. There's Rachel. <laughs> um, Love it. That's beautiful. One of, one of our right? instructors, Cheryl. So we have some instructors that are not your typical age, and we found that that is even um, better. Amazing. So we have instructors in their 40s and 50s, and yeah. everybody loves them. So, tell the show. Right. I love it. Right, our difference is like a stronger. 29, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, how many instructors do you have? We have 12. Wow. What did you say? That's so incredible. We have to plug this in, so... Okay. Um, awesome. We can have more tour <laughs> later if you want. <laughs> yes. I... And are are your instructors all independent contractors or are they employees um, or some so other way? <laughs> we have done both in the history of the studio. Um, and at times we've had a mix of both. But at the current moment, they're all independent contractors. 
So none, can you still hear us? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Um, it got really quiet there for a minute. <laughs> but, <laughs> so like your answer, so she just hung up on you. <laughs> no, <laughs> just like, don't worry. <laughs> no, so, so none of our instructors are full-time. So I've always had kind of a um, bottom-up management style because I, I feel like the more we can support them with their outside goals, the longer they'll stay with us. And most of our instructors have been with us for a very long time. Mm -hmm. The majority have been with us over five years and we have quite a few new ones. We also do our own in-house instructor training. So we teach people how we want them to teach in-house. Yes, so we, awesome. Angela and I spent a couple months creating a program on what we think is successful instead of sending them somewhere where they just teach the tricks because they know the tricks and all that good stuff, but really how to keep a class and how to be a part of our community is what we look for. That's so amazing, probably so. Half, half of our instructor training is really about how to maintain the studio culture, not about how to teach, you know, how to do the tricks how to teach the tricks maybe, but not about how to do them because they already know that by the time they've come to us with a desire to teach that they already have the skills, but they may not have the customer service or culture or inclusion um, or class management skills. So that's mostly what we teach in our instructor class. I love that. And how long does the instructor training um, take, take place then? Like, is it a month or... So um, it's up to them. We kind of, we, we did two rounds of it. And in the first round, we did like the three days of just nine to five, go, go, go. And then we do a eight class in-house um, student teaching session. So they have to do eight classes with one of the instructors just to get their feet wet. Um, so they're not thrown to the wolves and... <laughs> and like expected to be teaching all this stuff. Um, and we find some people after they go through the program and go through the eight weeks of student teaching, sometimes they decide it's not really what they thought it was. <laughs> um, so the student teaching really helps them to make that decision before we take them on as an instructor, whether this is really something they want to do. <laughs> right, because you're that. really investing in, in that person. So right. it's, yeah. <laughs> Classes. Um, I don't know if there's anything that cares about this. Right, because we also have right now. <laughs> I love it. Um, sorry about like the interruption. Of... We just had someone to walk in. Yeah, that's, no, okay. that's awesome. Strumming in business. Oh, like, so yeah. so <laughs> do you get a lot of walk in? <laughs> um, we, we try to discourage that <laughs> because we don't really have front office staff. So typically, yeah, unless we're questions. here during non-class hours, which is what oh, we're here right now, there's typically nobody here or they're teaching classes. So if we have somebody, we usually lock the doors yeah. so people can't interrupt the class. Understood. So we have, a, we have a super strict policy here about late attendance. And we found that that has helped us tremendously keep control of our classes. So we don't allow people to come in late. Um, and we lock the door once the class starts. That way we don't have any distractions, no latecomers. Um, we've just found that allowing students to come in late kind of fosters a culture of disrespect for the class, the instructors, and the other students in the class. Understandable. Right. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. students come late all the time. <laughs> yeah. And it, you know, it, it becomes a whole culture in itself of, oh, this person always comes late. And then it's very distracting to the, the curriculum. Yeah. She yeah. wanted her kid to do it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, that was a good segue. Yeah. Like, we constantly have people asking about kids. Did you tell her to take that class? I did. And then I gave her, we just, did you see these yet? I haven't even seen them. We just got these in. Um, oh, they're little brochures, um, and they give the class description yeah. and everything yeah. we offer. Beautiful. I love it. Look at the height. And if you can see Angela and my height difference, <laughs> <laughs> there, it, there it is. Too funny. <laughs> Too funny. Love it. <laughs>
Do you Please offer online like classes for people who are far? I'm sorry, Mandy. Oh, that's okay, no, that's perfect. So we don't specifically offer that. We did during the, the shutdown period, we did some online classes. And what we found with online classes is it was great for keeping our studio, studio community together, but we could not make enough money to make it viable in the long term. If there was just no way to... <laughs> to make enough money on the few people who had equipment at home. And I mean, we did floor class. We did a lot of stuff that they could do without equipment, but it's just economically not viable in the long run. Um, we do occasionally, we do um, like Zoom, Zoom clinics with an instructor. So a couple of years back, we took one with Heidi Coker, where we had a class of nine students and an instructor, and then she was on Zoom. And we had a great time because that way we could get some more advanced um, acrobatic curriculum in having instructors here to spot. So typically when you're just doing a Zoom class with someone, you don't have someone to spot you, which makes it difficult. So we were learning Fonji's that day. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that actually I worked out it. really great because we had two instructors in the room to do the spotting. We had Heidi to teach us the technique, and then we had nine advanced students on the poles. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's a really good way to do like a workshop for your your teachers and everything too. And, that's and it's a little bit think about. It's a little bit more cost effective. Um, mm -hmm. For example, if we had Heidi come here, that would be a very large expense because we'd have to pay her travel and then workshop fees and everything. So the online was a little bit more economically feasible for us and for our students. Yeah, that's awesome. And how many classes do you teach a week that are in studio? Right now on our schedule, we have over 40. Um, every night we're just slam packed. We really need one more room to <laughs> really make this work. Um, a couple like, of what's our classes. What was that? Uh, What's a typical schedule? Like, do you have morning classes, evening classes? How late evening. do they go in the night? Just the evening? All, mostly even, evening, daytime during the weekends, but from 4 p.m. And our last class was at 8.30. Oh, wow. Yeah. And how evening. long are the classes? About a, either an hour if they're intro classes or an hour and 15. Ah, okay. Nice. Yeah, we found because of where we are geographically located, pretty much evenings and weekends are our prime time. So we've tried many times over the years to have day classes, and it just hasn't worked out because most of our clients are kind of nine to five people. So we do have some open polls and some, we, we have a few day classes, but they don't tend to be as popular as our evening classes. And then Saturday and Sunday are just jam packed from morning to night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Are your classes always full too? 90%. Yeah, pretty much. A couple wow. of them are waitlisted weeks in advance. Um, we have like newer ones added to the schedule that take a couple couple weeks to get full, but they're usually waitlisted. But as far cool. as advice to newer studios, that doesn't happen overnight. So <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah, you have to be very patient and very consistent with your culture and your policies and procedures in order to make that happen. That's been a very consistent strategy that we've worked on for the last decade. So somebody who thinks they can open a studio and have full classes the next day, that's unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. It takes a long time. Right. There's so many other things that go like, do you do all of like the marketing and everything? Or do you have other people that work on that for you? No, I do all, all of that. Of it. Um, I have one instructor who is a who does digital marketing and digital artwork. So she's been helping me. I just run out of time in the day. <laughs> but Instagram is where and where we saw you is our biggest, biggest hit. Right. I'm always interested in like the different channels that studios go because it's really different for every region to how you're going to reach your right. students. Yeah. We're in a kind of interesting situation where the people that are directly living in this community within blocks of us are not the people that are coming to the studio. So most of our clients travel 20 minutes to an hour to get here. 
Wow. Um, so kind of local marketing, like local, you know, radio and restaurant, you know, putting cart that doesn't work for us because our local yeah. market isn't really our demographic. Got it. Wow. And are there other studios in your area or there's it's just you? Um, there's one in Mystic that does poll only. Yep. Oh, and wow. then that's about what? That, that's 30, 20, no. 20 miles away. Yeah. Wow. And then there's some aerial studios. Yeah, in Rhode Island yeah. here and there. We don't have yeah, a lot of yeah. competition, but there's other places people can go. Yeah. yeah and we always yeah. encourage you can learn something wherever you go from anybody. There's no one way to do something. Yeah. Which and I'm... I've never I've never felt competitive as far as with other studios because I, I encourage everybody to go to other studios. I also encourage my instructors to teach at other studios. So because I can't offer anybody or Jen can't, I, I'm still trying to change from me to Jen. <laughs> because Jen can't offer anybody full-time employment, mm -hmm. I think it's um, our duty as studio owners to not have non-compete agreements and to let our instructors teach wherever they want because that helps us because they learn other studio practices, helps their teaching. It's a win-win to teach at other studios. So I yeah. have a couple instructors that teach at another studio as well. That's awesome. I am so glad you, you talked about that because it is about like the healthy competition because there's always going to be competition, but it needs to be like healthy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're all in this together and, you know, everyone has different um, right. facilities to offer too. So like what the things that you teach in the one facility are going to be a little bit different and what you can offer somewhere else too. And yeah. just everyone just grows. Yeah. And we have quite a few, you know, four or five instructors that don't teach regularly, but have been teaching for us for almost 10 years. So if they're in town or they come visit family, they come and teach for us. Um, Yaddy Maddie, do you know Yaddy Maddie? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she comes and teaches for us when she's visiting her family in town. And we've just, we've got a lot of relationships like that where we can bring in instructors just for one or two classes that's awesome thanks so it sounds like you are ready to look for another location is that something that you is in like the short-term plans or what are what are your plans for the future in the studio uh i would love to but this is such like so so homey and i feel like this space has really evolved into what we are i would love to um, but I feel like everyone is so used to this one spot. I would hate to uproot it. I don't like change. As, as someone who likes change, I'm like, I don't want to change it. <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot of work to build out a space, a lot, a lot of work. And, um, you know, you're going to inevitably lose some of your community when you move to a different location, which is kind of scary, I think. So, you know, if it happens, it happens. Mm -hmm. um you know we we would always love more space <laughs> always <laughs> right like after you get to the point where like all the classes are full you're like now what do we do, what do we <laughs> well, now do? we enjoy <laughs> <laughs> this is true maybe open a second location i don't know we had one yeah for a while i had a oh. second location in upstate new york oh wow um, I did not know that yeah Tanisha Brown do you know Tanisha B yeah 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 she was one of our students and instructors and she got her husband got deployed to Watertown New York and she said I'll run it for you if you open it so I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> so we had a little tiny studio way out in the wilds of upstate New York it was very cold there I think it was like negative six the weekend we went in one weekend my husband and I gutted the inside of the building and redid it and put new floors paint like everything all in one weekend <laughs> um, so we had that studio about two and a half years and then her husband got um, transferred to Georgia and that's when we called it quits on that one wow <laughs> That's crazy. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> so much experience with different studios and everything. Facts. So Angela, why why are you giving up the, the reins to Jen? 
do my math. <laughs> um, so after 10, I, I told my husband, I'm going to do this for five years. And then it, it stretched to 10 years and it's not negative. So everybody kind of views it as a, a negative thing. There's nothing negative about it. I was just ready to pass the rain. Jen has the, the new energy, you know, she's younger. <laughs> She, she was ready. So she managed the studio for a whole year um, completely on her own, kind of to see if that was something she really wanted to do. And she loved it. And she's just bringing new energy to it. Um, and I'm still around. I'm still here. Um, I'm not going anywhere. So I still feel involved. So it's kind of the best of both worlds because I can pass over the responsibility, but still still be around. That's awesome. Now you can enjoy and yeah. focus on your next adventure. Yes. That's exciting. Right. And look back at what you built and see how it evolves with. Next. And it's so, I'm so proud of Jen and so proud of everything she's done here. And it's so fun for me to watch kind of my baby, yeah. you know, take on new life with Jen. Yeah. If, if she's added so many things. I would be like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to do flying pole. <laughs> Jen's like, I don't want to do flying pole. So it's, it's really, she has that energy that is really good for the studio. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I bought a flying pole. I need you to come help me do this. And she's like, no. And I said, okay, I'm going to figure it out myself. <laughs> I look at you. You were just on it, being beautiful, worth it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I See? love it. Um, do you have any advice for, um, goodness, we usually ask, for advice for pollers or competitors, but I guess for anybody, for people who want to be studio owners or any advice at all. Um, oh boy, that's that can get really deep really fast. <laughs> um, so for people who want to be studio owners, definitely hook up with an experienced studio owner and get some mentoring because there's a lot of things that we can offer you that will save you thousands of dollars in lost money just because we've done it for so long. So if you're thinking of opening a studio, please, please hook up with somebody who's done it. Um, it will really save you a lot of heartache in the short term and in the long term because we kind of know what works and what doesn't work. As far as just a polar, take classes at lots of places, take classes in different apparatus. Um, don't be afraid to totally step out of your comfort zone oh chair dance we do that too yeah. and troop i and forgot to talk about that <laughs> <laughs> so there's so much yeah we also we also offer like dance classes um take all of it because it all improves everything about your dance um so you can have the strength for full that then translates very well to other um, dance forms mm -hmm. um, what's your advice Jen? my advice is get that community going. I've been to pole studios and no one talks, no one's friends. They just do their thing and they leave. But here, it, I always say like, whenever someone talks about aerial arts, that there's nowhere else in the world where you can go into a room full of women that are na mostly naked <laughs> and people cheer you on. There's no judgment. There's everyone cheers for you. You meet your best friends. I met, I've been in people's weddings. I've met Angela. It's just like, they don't do it for poll. They do it for the community yeah. and to see their friends. And I would attribute that, what she just said, to why we've been so successful when a lot of other studios haven't. It's the culture that we really try hard to really not just say we accept everybody, but really in our hearts, accept everybody and really make that extra effort to be friends with people and notice when somebody's feeling left out and draw that person in and, you know, make this a space where people can come not only just to get fit, but also to hang out and, you know, eat cookies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, no, there's no judgment about, oh, you're eating sugar or, you know, don't eat that or don't eat this. It's all, it's all good here. So our bad habits, our good habits, it's all safe here. So people can feel comfortable coming in here and, kind of letting it all hang out <laughs> yeah i mean the money of that it brings in is great but just having somebody come up to you and say thank you i didn't have the courage to do this and your place has changed my life 
is really, really what makes me strive to do this and continue doing it. Yes. I love that. Thank you so much for sharing that. <laughs> Yes, and thank you so much for sharing all everything about your studio, your space, and yeah. Thank I do have me. one more. You have one yeah. more? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you have anything else you want to promote? Uh, YouTube, TikTok, we, um, we're we going to share all your links in the comments, but anything that you want to share with the audience? Ooh, we do have a TikTok. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> right, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram is probably our main um, Instagram, Facebook are probably our main sources of um, what's going on. What's going on? Um, YouTube, we don't do a lot with, so don't you don't need to promote that. Um, TikTok, we have a TikTok. Um, yeah. Sometimes we've had a couple TikTok videos that went crazy for some reason, and we, <laughs> we tried to figure out why because they weren't necessarily the best or the most perfect but we've had a few that kind of blew up yep. on us which was good for us <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny awesome we'll, we'll put all of those links below and then are your classes drop in like are they series can we visit and and start at any sort of class or are there certain classes that we can like take um so you know, because we know you're a polar, yes, you could start in any place you want. For people that just come in off the street and say that they're experienced pole dancer, we usually have them start in a beginner class because their level experience may not equate to our class level. Um, most of our classes are drop in. You have to sign up ahead. You can't just, you know, show up. But the only <laughs> classes that we have that are series are our true choreography class because we're doing choreography for a performance. Um, we do need those to be the same people for the whole eight week. It's going to be 17 weeks. So 17 time. weeks. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Always changing. <laughs> um, oh yeah. We didn't even talk about that. We do. Two right. I was like, what performances? <laughs> yes. So we do two showcases a year um, and they're huge. We usually cram about a hundred people in here. Um, it's a very big event. It's very fun. We now we have to kind of limit it because sometimes we have too many performers. So I think our last one, we had to cap it at 20 something. 22. Because otherwise the show would be too long. And <laughs> wow. so um, showcase have been really fun over the years. Yeah. It gets them ready kind of for a competition because we had two um, of our instructors go to PSO. So we had the showcase in October and then they were like, okay, I can do this now. So it goes and gets the performing vibe without it having to do anything super scary <laughs> i love it so the performance series class is that like a group number or do you all work on your own um... it's a it's a group number um, ah, that's cool. so, so yeah we have three choreographers three very talented choreographers and they kind of um trade off that class and then now we actually have two. One is kind of beginner troupe for people who have just started doing a group dance number. No poles, um, sometimes chair. Um, Maybe a fedora or cane if they're feeling jazzy. Yeah, but they're just <laughs> um, dancing in not not pleaser heels, but they're dancing in um, the ballroom you know, like ballroom heels. And it's oh, like yeah. sexy, fun, um, you know, Beyonce song. Yeah. Like that. yeah. Um, so we have a beginner and an advanced class for that. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> that <is cool. laughs> right, I was just thinking about that. I'm like, wow, that's, but that, and how many um, students do you allow in, um, I guess, in your class or in that series too? Um, I actually spoke with her today. So the more advanced one is going to be Troop Elite. She's going to have cap it at 10. And then the uh, Troop Evolve which I call baby troop is going to be 14. Wow. That's, that's awesome. so awesome. <laughs> it's neat. So you add other forms of dance besides just pole dance and the aerial we, arts. We yeah. do. We sometimes we do like contemporary pole. Um, we do hell on heels, which don't always, which pleasers. Um, so it doesn't always involve the pole work, but more of like the floor. Um, we have a girl that's certified in liquid motion. She'll come wow. teach a class every once in a while. 
uh, chair dance, chair dance. Yeah. Um, nice. and then it once a month we have this lovely gentleman Fred come in and we set up all the hammocks and we do sound healing in hammocks. Oh. So you get to lay and meditate and he does like the singing bowls. So if someone comes up and they're like, I want to do this, I'm like, rock on, let's do it. Let's let's yeah. make it happen. Yeah. Right. That sound healing sounds amazing. I That's snore cool. the whole time. So it's like, <laughs> here's a bowl, here's Jim snoring. <laughs> You can edit that out. <laughs> in your little in the the lime the yellow hammock. The yellow hammock, <laughs> lots of snores. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. I think I, I don't have any more questions to ask. If Christy you're all done as well. Um I think so. It's so it's interesting because we use we used to ask so many different questions for just yes. polars. So I wanna like I'm, nor, I'm used to asking, what's your favorite pole trick or what's your pole next? <laughs> <laughs> well, we could save those for another interview when we interview you individually yeah. as pole dancers. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And we're always, if you ever, ever have any questions or want to stop by and say hi, yeah. our yeah. DMs are always open. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gee, I can't wait to visit. We have to we have to put them on our tour list. Yes, yes for please sure. <laughs> right, our unofficial 2023 tour. We're we'll visiting <laughs> everyone that we've talked Love to. It. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, thank you so much for for hanging out with us this afternoon and showing us your your studio and telling us all about your business and yeah, yeah. it's been awesome. Really, thank you. Thank, thank you for studio. having us. <laughs> Our pleasure. It was such a beautiful studio. I love, oh my God, the other room with all the color, it pumped me up. <laughs> right? It looks like a, it looked like a dream. I was just like, wow. <laughs> I need to be in that space at some point in my life. <laughs> yes, please definitely come. Do you have a I do. Oh, we also have one more class. Oh my God. Um, we do heel <laughs> rub. So we do low flow lira and heels. Ah. That, that sounds awesome. Heel rock. Genius. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> You're like, what are we going to call this? Yeah, I was like, I'm going to smush it together. <laughs> I love that. Oh my goodness. I didn't even know you could do heels on Lira. That's genius. That is really so beautiful. I love anything in heels. <laughs> exactly. Everyone's like, I want to wear the heels. I'm like, let's do all of it except in the silks and the yeah, I was gonna say maybe not silk. Yeah, maybe that one. Be... <laughs> that might be a little bit dangerous. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, speaking of heel, I guess we should <laughs> find out. <laughs> my name is Mandy Mac. Yes, and I am Chris Rivers, and we are here with Aerial Arts Fitness, Fitness. and we are starting off. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love to watch the heels. Yes, these aren't even mine, but I I thought they'd be fitting. Oh my god, I love those sparkles and black. 